So I've got another great case for you. This is a little upper division cataract and refractive surgery. It involves intraocular lens exchange where we remove a synergy lens from the eye after the patient's already had a YAG capsulotomy. So there's an open posterior capsule. And then we insert a Vividy lens into the eye and place it into the capsular bag. And as a little background, this lady is a 52-year-old prior minus 5 diopter myope who in September 2021 had premium lens replacement with the Synergy lens. She ended up seeing 2020 far and 2020 near and had basically a plano refraction. The rest of her eye structures appeared normal. About a year later, in September 2022, she came back and said, basically, she can't see well enough. She'd already had a YAG capsulotomy. The Synergy lens was perfectly positioned. Her eye looked good, but she was simply intolerant of the optics through the Synergy lens. During her pre-op exam, I explained to her that objectively, her vision is very good. It's normal. And she could choose to just leave things alone and have no additional surgery. But unfortunately, she was very insistent and she was intolerant of the quality of vision through her Synergy lens. So she wanted it removed and replaced with another premium lens implant. So we chose to use the Vividy lens for her. So we advised her before surgery that if we go into the eye, there are three possible outcomes. Number one, we'll remove the Synergy lens and place the Vividy in reverse optic capture since there was 360 degrees of anterior capsule overlap of the Synergy optic. Number two, we could remove the Synergy and place a Vividy into the capsular bag, which would be a little bit more tricky since the patient's already had a YAG laser capsulotomy. However, because it's been a full year since her original surgery, we knew that the posterior capsule, in fact, the entire capsular bag complex would be a little more stiff and fibrotic than it would have been in the first six months after surgery. And then the third possible option would be that we remove the synergy and simply place a monofocal lens into the eye. So let me share with you the video of the case. Here we see the synergy lens inside the eye. The posterior capsule is open post YAG laser capsulotomy. Multiple side ports are created. Lidocaine and viscoelastic are infused into the anterior chamber. A Donenfeld spatula is used to lift the anterior capsule from the anterior surface of the IOL. Then, Helon GV is used to viscodissect the IOL from within the capsular bag. It should be noted that the capsular complex becomes more stiff and fibrotic with time, usually six months or more, after the original surgery. Once the implant has been visco dissected 360 degrees, we use a Connor wand to lift and rotate the implant to bring it into the anterior chamber where we use micro forceps and IOL cutters to bisect and remove the Synergy lens in two pieces. We then insert the Vividy lens into the eye. Once we've placed the Vividy into the eye, we gently and methodically place each haptic into the capsular bag equator. We then rotate the haptics within the fibrotic capsular bag complex to make sure that we have enough peripheral capsular support to hold the lens in a stable fashion long term. There's a generous amount of viscoelastic in the eye to keep the anterior chamber stable during these maneuvers. At this point, the Vividy lens appears stable and well-centered. We choose to not use irrigation and aspiration to remove the viscoelastic as the infusion from the IA may push the Vividy out of the bag. Instead, we use balanced salt solution on a 27 gauge cannula to gently irrigate and flush out the Helon GV from the anterior chamber. Though this process is time consuming, it is definitely more gentle on the IOL and reduces the risk of IOL displacement. All of the entry points into the eye are stromal hydrated and check to make sure that they are watertight. At the end of the procedure, the Vividy lens appears stable and centered. In this case, there appears to be no vitreous prolapse 
into the anterior chamber as verified by sweeping the pupil with a cyclodialysis spatula. Therefore, no anterior vitrectomy was needed. So how did the patient do? She ended up seeing 20-20 without glasses, essentially had a minus a quarter refraction on post-op day one, and she was seeing pretty well. I haven't seen her uh, since that time because she had her surgery on October 25th, and I saw her one day after surgery. And today, I'm, as I'm recording this, it's November 5th. So this just goes to show that uh, despite an open posterior capsule, we can place a single piece acrylic lens into the capsular bag after we explant a different type of single piece acrylic lens. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.